Let me give you a great story. Okay, great story. Uh, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world is Steve Jobs. God, God bless him. I'm sorry he's not here. But and I just read a book by uh, Elon Musk, and uh, actually a story by Elon Musk. He said there's seven books that had an enormous impact on his life, and Steve Jobs' life story by Isaac, uh, the perp author. Uh, yeah, it's like it, Isaac Wharton. Or I, I'll have to pull it up. It'll come to you. He said that's the number one book that that influenced him. Anyway, here's Steve Jobs. He starts Apple. He's a very difficult personality, and the company is growing, and uh, he owns a lot of shares. But uh, finally, they got mad at him, and the board of directors threw him out and fired him. So he went off, and he started Pixar. And Pixar it became a multi-billion dollar company. And he was invited to come in sort of like as a, as, as a consultant. Just come in, walk around, see if he sees anything. But he wasn't on the, on the payroll. So he came in and walked around and got some sense of the market. And finally, they came to him and said, look, the company's uh, not doing that well. We're going to give it back to you. And um, uh, so here it is. So long. You're, you're a major shareholder. It's yours. So he said, well, called the accountants and said, what, what is our situation? He found that they had only two months of money left, and then the company would be bankrupt. Two months. And they were, of course, hiding it and shuffling it around. And so he set his managers down, and he said, how many products do we have? Surprise, surprise, 104 products. How many of these products are making money? Four. The other 100 are just keeping people employed. And they're, not, and, they're, and they're just marginal, they're losing money, and so the company's going bust. So he looks at it, he's got two months left to live, and he's got to have several million dollars to, to stay alive. And he only knows one person who has that kind of money, Bill Gates. And, and Bill Gates and he had been at loggerheads for years. And he had been, Steve Jobs had been attacking Bill Gates for being antiquated and old and uh, unimaginative and everything else. But Bill Gates had a very simple idea, a laptop on every desk, a laptop on every desk. And he be, and it's interesting because the head of IBM, when Bill Gates started, said there's a market worldwide for no more than 300 laptops. And uh, Bill Gates said, no. If you make it easy to use, you could have every single person will have a laptop. Now, every if you didn't have a laptop today, people would look at you like you lived under a rock somewhere. Everybody has a laptop and multiple laptops and desktops and everything. Anyway, so he calls Steve. He's been beating up Bill Gates for years on public stages and everything else. And uh, so he calls up uh, Bill Gates and he said, Bill, he said, um, I'm in trouble. He said, if I don't have some money, I'm going to die. The Apple is going to go broke. And uh, I wonder if I could borrow some money from you. And Bill Gates said this, and it brings tears to my eyes when I think about it. He said, Steve, he said, Apple is too important a company to go broke. He said, I'll give you all the money you need. He said, but I'm not going to give you a loan. He said, I'm going to buy stock in Apple. So I'm going to be in the same with same rowboat with you, and um, I'm going to I'm going to gamble that you're going to make it a success, and so that was the turning point. He now had the money to survive. He called all of his managers together, and he said, "I want each person here to recommend ten products that we need to cut off, discontinue." And they all cried and wept, and no, oh, no, we can't do that, and we work so hard to bring these up, ten each. So we eventually brought them meeting after meeting after meeting, and they all came down to finally four products. They got rid of 100 products. Then the next thing they said is, we've got to have a new product. It's, it's the market for laptops. And every Japanese company in the world has got laptops that are cheaper than ours, and sometimes, oops, better, and so on. So he said, what do we do? And they came up with this idea of a, of a phone, and a phone would have everything in it. It would have... It would have recording and video and audio and music and, 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 and it would be in one single phone and everything else. And they kept bringing him different versions. And he kept saying, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. But here was the greatest thing is the biggest phone manufacturers in the world at that time were Nokia and Blackberry. 
They each had 49% of the world market. And Nokia had developed the technology of the iPhone, but decided not to use it because they were very happy with their market domination already. And so it was I don't know, patented. Everybody, when, when, they, when, you, when you have apply for a patent, um, it becomes public knowledge. Everybody knows about it. So they were looking and they found that Nokia had this new technology for an iPhone and they weren't doing anything with it. So they called them up and said, would you sell that technology? And they said, sure, we have no intention of using it. It'll t help us to, to uh, recover some of our costs. So they bought the entire Nokia package, which is today's iPhone. And they said, you, you can take it because it won't do you any good. Within five years, Apple was the dominant phone supplier in the world, and Nokia was broke. Their, their market share went from 49% to 1%. BlackBerry went from 49% to 1%. And the, five years later, they sold a billion iPhones and made it. And they say now that the way it's going, it's going to be the first trillion dollar company. Be the first trillion dollar company because, because they, 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 this is one of the most important things you ever learn in business is that there's three keys to business success. Number one, make a sale. Number two, make a second sale to the customer because they're so happy with what you gave them in the first sale. Number three is bring your friends. Sell, <laughs> sell again, bring your friends because you're so happy you want your friends to have it as well. My son, my son, my staff, everybody that I knew, I, I had I had, I had a uh, Nokia. No, I'm sorry, I had a BlackBerry. And everybody around me was all using the iPhones. They said, Brian, you've got to have an iPhone. you got to have an iPhone. My son was telling me, Dad, you've got to invest in Apple. This iPhone is going to go crazy. He's 16 years old. I said, my son, you don't know these things. You're, you're a child. I'm an adult. I'm going to keep up with my little BlackBerry. And I had a good friend, one of my clients, who was about 60 at that time. And he decided he's going to go all in like in Las, Las Vegas. He went all in on Apple, took all the money he had in his life and bought Apple stock. Within five years, he was so rich, he never had to work again. And, and so anyway, so, 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 so what happened with this, with this uh, iPhone is that it just exploded. And, and they, after it had been out for about five or eight years, they had made a billion sales. Then they interviewed their clients and they asked them, what... Um, Oh, do you feel about buying another iPhone when they come out with something, you know, more modern? 90% of iPhone clients said, we'll buy a new one as soon as it comes out. This was the point where the famous Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett said, I don't invest in technology because I don't understand it. And I don't invest in anything I don't understand. When he saw that, I'm just guessing, I, this is not a fact. When he saw that 90% of their customers were going to buy another iPhone, he just bought billions of dollars worth of uh, Apple stock. And he was interviewed just two weeks ago at their annual meeting in Omaha. He said one of the best, one of the best investment decisions he made in his whole life. And he has, he has achieved a return on investment with Berkshire Hathaway of 1,246% return on investment. If you had bought with him at the very beginning, you'd have had a more than a million times return on your, on your money. And he said, and Apple was one of the best. So therefore, th th this is so exciting. The opportunities are all around you. You just have to keep looking, reading, studying, reading, studying. Sometimes people, when I was starting to give seminars, one of the things I found is that when you go to foreign countries, 95% of the products that are really popular in a foreign country are never sold outside that country. They're never sold outside that country. So sometimes you will find a product, a, a franchise opportunity, a, a, a mechanical device, something that uh, nobody's using back home. And you go to them and you say, uh, can I have that? Can I enter into an agreement with you and pay your royalty? And they say, sure, we have no plans to go outside of our country. And some of the richest people in the world just walk down the street 